Dear friends, let us discuss about Ben Jonson's school of poetry. Seventeenth uh, century poetry came to be continued by the influence of Ben Jonson. Ben Jonson, a great dramatist and a poet, succeeded in influencing to a great extent many young poets. Ben Jonson's school of poetry came to be called Cavalier Poetry. The entire Cavalier's group is a continuation for a long time. The first quarter of the 17th century where Ben Jonson's school of followers continued to write continued for the second quarter of 17th century also. Poets like Robert Herrick, Lovelace, Suckling and Waller, Denham and Abraham Cowley came to be called as the Cavalier Poets. Robert Herrick is known for the use of nature as a great tool for his poet. Robert Herrick is influenced by minor aspects of nature, the flowers or trees and very simple natural objects came to be the great important aspects in his poetry. For example, a poem like Daffodils, one of the classic examples of Cavalier poetry by Robert Herrick is a great influencing poem. Robert Herrick in his poem Daffodils tries to convey a message that the entire human life is also like the very short life of daffodils. The daffodils, so beautiful flowers born in the morning after sunrise, live till the sunset. A very short period of six to eight hours life in a day is not a simple one. The flowers which bloom for such a short period remain very powerful in making the human life very happy. The flower that lives for such a short period leaves this world with a fragrance. Human life though extends for 80 years or 90 years in this vast world doesn't really make a sense as flower really did. Human beings have a great lesson to learn from these flowers because in spite of living for such a long period, human beings may not leave any fragrance in this world. Just as the flowers haste and rush away by sunset in the evening, ending their life, Human beings also end their life after 80 years or 90 years. But flowers seem to be great because they are able to make the human world so happy by their blooming nature. This is a great lesson that Robert Herrick leave by his poem. It's a message to the human world. Just as Robert Herrick did, poets like Lovelace and Suckling also do the same thing in leaving a message. The second group is the poets or triumvirates called Edmund Waller, John Denham and Abraham Cowley. Abraham Cowley among the triumvirates is a significant poet who became popular by his Pindaric Odes. Pindaric Odes is a popular poem that is made very significant kind of writing by Abraham Cowley in the middle of 17th century. Abraham Cowley, Edmund Waller and John Denham came to be called a link between the Puritan and Restoration poetry. John Milton, 
who represents Puritan period as a single great poet and John Dryden who represents restoration period after 1960 came to be linked by these three poets namely Abraham Cowley, Waller and Denham. Abraham Cowley's poems like Beauty is a very ironical attack on the very harping nature of a concept called beauty. How the beauty is associated with a woman and how beauty can play with human beings or the male counterparts is analyzed by Abraham Cowley in his poem like beauty. In the same way, a poet like Denham, Waller, also influenced 17th century English poetry. A poem like Cooper's Hill is a fine example of the study of topography, a minute study of topography by the poets like Waller and Denham. In the same way, a poem like Summer's Island is also a very minute study of topography and the war that Britishers waged. The 17th century England, though is except Milton and Dunn, seem to be very dry, is made great by these poets. The triumvirates came to be called classical poets also. But however, they didn't succeed in following the great characteristics of the ancient classical poets like Horace, Virgil or the great Titinius. But somehow these poets came to be called as neoclassicals or pseudo-classicals because Abraham Cowley especially came to follow the classical spirit in his poetry. But they didn't succeed. That is why they came to be somehow be called as pseudo-classicals and sometimes as neoclassicals. The three poets seemed to be great because they were a link between restoration period that began after 1660s and the Puritan age that actually began after 1625. After the great metaphysical school of writing, John Milton as a single poet seemed to be a monarch in Puritan age. Puritan age witnessed a strict moral and religious conduct made the people think that they are restricted by moral code of conduct. And these poets break that restriction of Puritan age. That is why the poetry during 1640s to 1660s in the hands of Edmund Waller, Denham and Abraham Cowley gave a relief to the English people who came to feel that they were suppressed by the extreme religious sense. However, restoration period that began after 1660s when the theatres came to be reopened in England made a poet like John Dryden consider that poetry of Abraham Cowley, Van Denham and Waller is really a link between the two periods, especially during the Commonwealth period when the theatres were closed, this poetry actually enlightened the people of England. And after 1660s, actually the restoration period began. John Dryden, who popularized the heroic couplet, is actually owing to these three poets 
of this period. Thank you.